Tommy, what do you think of this book? I haven't read that book. Well, just judge it by its cover. You can't judge a book by its cover. Oh, well, how many chickens do you think are going to be hatched in Wyoming this year? You can't count the chickens before they're hatched. Oh, well, what do you think of today's show? It's going to be great. Well, how can you tell? Well, judging from the cover of today's script, I know there aren't any chickens in it. But, never mind. Help me, it'll be sooner than you know, don't you know? Sooner than I know? And they say kids say the darndest things. You can be my little assistant chef. Me? A chef? The Food Channel is proud to present Cooking for Monsters with Master Chef Bobby Dilla Generic. That's generic. Oh, so sorry, Monsieur Generic. Welcome, welcome, everyone, to my show. And how are we today, Moon Capitan Squash? May we, Bon? Uh, what are we making today? Today, we are going to whip up a little something to feed from one to twenty monsters. Frankenstein French Toast with Creature from the Black Lagoon Lagoons and Mummy Marinette the Mussel. Mmm, what a description, Bobby. I can almost taste it. Ooh la la! First, we must slice the carrots. <laughs> it's a slice! It's a slice! It's a Well, Bobby, for the cry I quit playing with the food and come to the table. Kelly, Derek, Bobby! Oh, you're here. Hi! Uh, I say six minutes after. Nah, I say about two minutes. Hon, how soon do you think it'll be before Uncle Ted shows up for dinner, huh? Hey, 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 now, rain it on. Don't be making fun of my big bro, Ted. I say in two seconds. Hey, everyone! I win! How'd you know? We're having turkey cakes. It's Uncle Ted's second most favorite. Pull up a chair, Ted. Nope, not hungry. <laughs> what? No way. That's a first. You don't want to eat? I'm too excited to eat. Hmm. What could make Uncle Ted too excited to eat? A sail on socks and a can? Or maybe a trout on a stick cooker? Or sliding a whoopee cushion under Aunt Ruth at her bingo club? I've won two nights and one day for four to Donner Pass Lodge. Nice. All I have to do is listen to a 90-minute sales pitch. That's a cinch. They're looking for people to buy timeshare condominiums in their skiing complex. It's up in the mountains. Mountains? Skiing? Lots of snow? Who wants to go? I'd love to, Ted, but I just can't take the time off. Well, I've got the twins to take care of. Well, what about us kids? Uh, like, get real. What about school? You don't even know how to ski. I could learn. Could not. Could too. Could not. Too. You know, then, there, that's not a bad idea. You could take the kids on a Friday. It's just two nights and one day. They wouldn't miss any school. 
you know what you're saying, Martha? Kelly, Derek, Uncle Ted, and Bobby off together on their own? Why not? Things would be quieter around here for the weekend. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> then it's okay with me, too. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Well, let's just see what my little going to the mountains manzi is packing for the trip. I'm ready to go. Well, hon, I don't think you should be taking all this stuff. You'll need warm clothes to battle the elements, don't you know? Battling the elephants? Help! Help! Captain Splash! Hang on, Bobby! Your hero is on the way! <laughs> wow! We'll need a miracle, Bobby, if we expect to battle these elephants. Not elephants, Bobby. Elements! Phew! Close call. Now, look, see. Here's what you need to take. Long underwear, a scarf, and gloves. You know, moms and kids sure have different ideas of what to pack for a trip. <laughs> Have fun. Hey, don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> You'll be careful and mind your manners, Bobby. Kelly, Kelly, you watch out for Bobby. And Derek, you call as soon as you get there, okay? Okay. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Later. And watch out. I will. Where the garbage can? Oh, that's a pink job. Okay, kids, fasten your seatbelts. We're off to Dunner Lodge. This is gonna be great. Okay, Babo, it's just two more hours now. Uh, what can I do for two hours? I know. Car games! Oh, count me out, Babo. Can't drive and think at the same time. You, you, you kids play. Wanna play the alphabet game? I see something that starts with the letter A. Forget it. Can't hear. I know. Wanna play the license plate game? I see California. That's a stupid game. You like it so much. You play it. <laughs> Can't hear. Sorry. Car games aren't any fun if nobody plays. I know a fun game. Want to play? What's that smell? Bobby, your car games are the worst. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, show them. I'll make up the ultimate car game. Hi, this is Gary Owens, the host of the ultimate car game. First, you make the back seat bigger, then you stretch a rope ladder across the back. Then you add obstacle courses, contestants, and a host, me, Gary Owens. Let's get down to fun. Okay, Bobby, if you can get past your brother and sister in the auto obstacle course, you win! <laughs> Go! We told you, we don't want to play your stupid car games. This trip is gonna be longer than I thought. Here we are! Wow! I get the abs! Uh-uh, you get what we don't want. That's right, Bobolina. You're low man on this totem pole. May I help you? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm here with my three guests. Who wish to partake of your hospitality? Will I consider investing in one of your guys' timeshare condos? The reservation is under Ted Knutzenberg or Sven. But uh, <clears throat> you can call me Uncle Ted. Certainly, Uncle Ted. This two-bedroom is representative of the timeshare condominiums. Enjoy. This is it. Right first! You mean last! Well... Yippee! 
Now this is what you'd call sharp. <laughs> fit for a king. Yeah, this could fit a king. Hear ye, hear ye! All who are gathered in the court of King Bobby, now listen to his royal rules and obey them throughout the kingdom. A hereby rule that the kids can play a hunk a hunk of whatever games they want, a hunk a hunk of whatever they want. A hunk a hunk a hereby proclaim no more bedtime. Me lord, me lord, a word. A hunk a hunk a halt. Let the lowly peasant girl speak. No, da, this isn't your room. You're bunking with Uncle Todd. <laughs> Get a move on, bird brain. Kel and I are sharing this room. It's way too cool for you. Okay, kids, I signed you up for a beginner ski lesson while I'm at the 90 Minute Sales presentation. So, Kelly and Derek, I expect you to look after Bobby, all right? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, sure. All right, listen, everybody. Here are a few important tips that you beginning skiers should remember. So pay attention. Word, those guys are so cute. Wow, that's hot. If, if, if we're supposed to be paying attention to our structure, how come I'm the only one doing it? And remember, if you get separated from your group or anything goes wrong, there are warming shacks on the mountain. And in those shacks, you're going to find phones and automatic heaters. Oh, who needs to listen to her? But, but, but. Totally. How hard can it be to ski? Sometimes you just can't argue with your brother and sister. Are we supposed to go on this ride? Oh, it's easy. Just watch me. It's like being at the carnival, Bobby. You can open your eyes now, Bobby. See, this is fun. How, 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 how do you get off this ride? It's easy. Just watch me. Okay. <laughs> See, it's easy. Oh, easy to fall. You just need a little practice. Come on. <laughs> yeah, check this out, Bobby. That was great, Derek. Now, this is the advance run. Are you sure you can ski well enough to meet us at the bottom? S sure! About dweeb? I'm talking about what our ski instructor said. She said we're supposed to go there to the warming cabin. I I'm freezing. <laughs> My ankle is killing me. Come on, it's not too far. We made it. Did you notice there's nobody here? What's the first thing to remember in a tough situation, Bobby? Don't panic. Right, Bobby. Don't worry, we're okay here. Unless it gets colder. Colder! Oops. Don't worry, I'll find a way to warm us up. If you're like me and can't read yet, I said, 
I will find fire and bring it back to the tribe. No fire here. No fire here. No fire here. I can't believe it. Like, how did you make this fire, Bobby? Easy. I just pushed the on button near the phone. Phone? There's a phone! Yeah, I used it to call the ski patrol. If you two had been listening to the ski instructor, you would have known what to do in emergency. So? How, how long is it going to take him to get here? My ankle is really starting to hurt. Your ankle? My hands are still freezing. I think I have frostbite. What do we do now, Bobby? Okay. Okay. You see, Bobby, listening so you know what to do pays off. You're no longer low man on the totem pole. Yeah. Don't worry. I know what to do. Let me tell you a story. Story? My hands are freezing, Kelly's ankle hurts, and you're gonna tell us a story? Yep. Once upon a time, there was a little boy on another planet. To escape their dying planet, his parents sent him in a rocket ship to Earth. Boy discovered on this new planet that he had superpowers. Luckily, he was found by Texas Rangers out looking for bad guys. When he grew up, they decided this visitor from another planet could use his superpowers to help them fight for justice. To hide his identity, they gave him a mask to wear. And when he wore the mask, he could transform into any shape. Somebody stop me! Bobby, that story doesn't make any sense. I know, but you forgot your owies while I fix them. Look! <laughs> my ankle. My hands. It's a little trick I learned from Mom. It's easier to give medicine when you're thinking about something else, don't you know? It worked! We're saved! At ease. The ski patrol is on the scene. <laughs> And in record time, under one half hour. All praise to your leadership. You're simply the best. Oh, no. You're the best, face it. We're the best. We're the team. Ooh, 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 ooh. Really? You only took a half hour? It didn't seem like it. I guess I was caught up in Bobby's story. Bobby? My brother. He put my hands in room temperature water. Did you do this fine work, young man? Uh-huh, and I didn't panic either. He didn't panic in a crisis. That is the stuff that heroes are made of, young man. May I call you hero, young man? Superhero is more like it. This young man single-handedly kept this group together for one half hour till help arrived. <coughs> oh, me. Here, here's a tissue. Wow. Now I know how Captain Squash feels after a job well done. <laughs> Uh, Bobby, I'm kind of thirsty. Oh, what a sales pitch! This place is great! <laughs> I just wish I had the money to buy in. Oh, well, I've got souvenirs for everybody! Water Wowsers! Are you, are you kids okay? Ski Patrol said I'd be fine in about a day. Yeah, you know, it looks worse than it is. Bobby kind of, you know, um, helped us. I was a superhero. <laughs> well, I guess so. <laughs> well, I was going to take everybody skiing, but uh, so what do you want to do now? We can watch Captain Squash videotape. Captain Squash on Treasure Island. It's a classic. That's the last thing I want to do. Want me to barf? Get real. Let's hit a flip. <laughs> guess you're outvoted, Bobo. Yeah. If 
brothers and sisters were nice to you all the time, life would be pretty boring. That's all, folks. <laughs> so, how do you feel being a hero, Bobby? Well, touch my hand. I think I still feel the same, Howie. <laughs> No, seriously, don't you feel just a little different than you did before today's show? Yeah, I feel a little different. I feel looser in the front and tighter in the back. From being a hero? No, from having my underpants on backwards. <laughs> Bobby Chanarek, you've been up here all this time and you're still bare? <laughs> <laughs>